what the fuck? Like, I don't even know how to describe what just happened. Um, hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is my review for the season finale of The Missing, season one, episode eight, Till Death. And this episode, I have so many mixed emotions about. I don't know how to really feel about it. I don't know if I really liked it, if I really disliked it. The ending, I just, I don't know how I liked it. Was this a satisfying episode? Yeah, it was very satisfying. I just don't know if I liked exactly what happened. Um, it was probably, it was definitely the best episode of the season. Definitely the best episode of the season. It was an amazing finale. It's just, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know, and I, I just really don't know how to feel about it. And honestly... I'm going to be honest, I really wish the show would have lasted, you know, this particular case would have lasted more than one season, because I kind of feel like it was a little bit rushed, and I'll talk about why, but let's just get to this episode. So, we start off with, a, it's very weird, actually, the opening, we don't understand what's going on here, um, it, it, like most times, you know, we're looking at this mysterious man harassing young boys on a snow-covered playground somewhere in Russia, and then we see this big-eared stick figure, um, you know, that, that drawing of, uh, um, you know, Oliver's drawing. And, um, I mean, what I was thinking was going to happen is that they were going to show that Oliver was in Russia. But we don't know what happens. Because then the rest of the episode, we follow the piece of evidence they discovered last week, um, you know, basically... Uh, the setup, and Tony, Emily, um, Julian, Mark, and Laurence are in on Elaine Deluxe, because that's who they think did it, of course, was Elaine, um, you know, Sylvie's, hu Sylvie's husband. So, they discover that only one of Elaine's 20 sobriety coins is missing year 12, and they go to his hospital room where he's dying of cancer to get the truth, and lying there struggling to breathe and wincing in pain, he won't say a word, and it's it's understandable why. I mean, he's kind of dying, so it, and it makes sense why he's, uh, you know, in pain and everything. So I thought that was uh, very interesting that that happened. So, basically, you know, they're, they're the sobriety coin and everything. And Elaine won't say a word until Emily's give, um, passion please crack his silence. And he begins his story. And we go all the way back to 2006 in this episode. We go all the way back to the first episode, which I actually really like this. Because, I mean, we didn't really see what happened to Oliver. We All we saw is that he was with Tony one second and then he left. So, and this kind of changes our entire opinion on the show. And it changes everything that we thought of on the show. And I gotta say, I give major props to them for doing that, really. It's 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 really good that they did that. So, Tony leaves the hotel for the pool. Oliver drops his yellow scarf on the way out. Um, Elaine decided to bring it to him in case he gets cold, ostensibly. But then it becomes clear that this is just an excuse to escape from his wife, Sylvie, and hit the bar. Meaning he isn't clean and sober, after all. And the bartender asks if he wants the regular, making it clear that... Um, Basically, he does this a lot. You can definitely tell that he has a real problem with that, and he proceeds to get loaded. He watches a soccer game, gets behind the wheel, and you know what's going to happen. Tony and Oliver are about to leave the pool, and they stop at the poolside. It's the same scene as we saw in the first episode, and uh, at this second, I'm like, okay, this is it. We're going to find out who did it. We're going to find out if Elaine was responsible or not, and basically, here's what happened. Oliver was not kidnapped. And when this happened, I was like, oh my god, this is an amazing twist. Oliver was not kidnapped. He saw a fox, and, you know, we were... You have to remember that that was his favorite animal. And it follows it... He follows it out of the pool complex through the woods and onto the stretch of road that Elaine is barreling down. He slams his car right into Oliver, and um, he can't detect a pulse or breathe, and this whole scene is just amazingly done. And basically... He killed Oliver, and it was all an accident. And you can see, what I love about this is the way they did this with, you know, Tony and Emily, their reactions. We don't even get to, they don't even talk. We're just, we see this reaction on their face. All this time they spent looking for their son, who now is dead, and you just feel so bad for them. And the thing is, like... But the thing is, you know he can't be dead. I'm just like, how is he dead? Because that drawing in the basement and the footage of him at the window in the house, there's clearly something else going on here. So Elaine takes his cell phone out of the pocket, dropping the incriminating sobriety coin in the process and dials for help. When the emergency operator pa picks up, Elaine goes silent. He can't report the incident Oliver um, 
without incriminating himself. So he hears Tony calling for Oliver and panics. That, you know, this is what happened when Tony was calling for Oliver. And Elaine cries. He picks up Oliver's um, body and puts him in the trunk. He calls someone else to help him. So basically, he just did it to protect himself. He didn't mean to kidnap him. He didn't do it for a bad reason. He did it because he basically wanted to protect himself and he didn't want him to become a suspect, which really this all makes sense if you think about it. And I think it's actually really well done the way they completely change it. it was all just a misunderstanding. However, it does kind of make, I could see if some people feel cheated because of this. I could definitely see if someone feels cheated about, um, you know, this, this reveal happening. I have to say, I thought it was very well done. Honestly, this was probably my favorite part of the episode was just this reveal. The first few minutes, the first like 30 something minutes of the episode is just him talking about what happened. I think it's actually very well done the way they did it. So, Basically, that person turns out that he was talking to was Georges Deloix, who, of course, is the future mayor of uh, Chalon de Bois, who is currently a judge, and it turns out is also Elaine's brother. Which kind of makes sense now, because, of course, he's kind he's kind of been, you know, um, he has, he's he been pretty happy to shut down the investigation. He seemed too happy. And he always looked like, um, you know, sort of like a villain, so it's very interesting to see what happened there. And George is, you know, Jorge is right for him to, to let him rot in jail. Like, he really hates, he does not like Elaine at all. But then changes his mind because if family isn't for helping you get away with murder, then what is good? And Jorge knows of a currently vac uh, vacated house and cashes in a couple of favors, ultimately leaving Oliver in that basement with a greasy Romanian charged with getting rid of the body. Um, but the problem is when the Romanian opens up the trunk, it's empty. So, what? I'm just like, what the, what the hell does that mean? So, Oliver makes his way upstairs. He can't open the window before the Romanian tears him away. There's our, there's the video footage. That was what we saw before, was that um, the Romanian tear him away and he couldn't open the window. That's really what was going on there. Um, that has to do with the whole video and everything. So, meanwhile, while Elaine is telling the story, which Jorge has told him from his hospital bed, he's clearly in pain. He's struggling to speak. He's saying more water. He whispers... And she lifts a straw to his mouth while watching Emily have to help Elaine. Um, it's, I mean, it's it's really a very bad scene because, of course, this is the man that is explaining how he is the reason she hasn't seen her son in eight years. It's excruciating to watch because it's like, I want more answers. I don't care that he wants water. I just want the answers here. And it really is kind of frustrating as a viewer, but I still thought it was very well done because, I mean, we have to remember, he's dying. So, and now we know why he's dying because he was an alcoholic and he had all these alcohol problems. Really, everything is connecting perfectly, and I like that. So, back to 2006, the Romanian calls George, um, Jorge's. The boy was still alive. He says that the boy was still alive when he got here. Um, and he told him to get rid of a body. You know, that basically, that's what he told, uh, Jorge's. And it was done. And Emily and Tony sob like they never had before. And now any modicute of hope has now been extinguished. They now know that their son is officially dead. And it honestly is the, is the hardest moment to watch in this entire show. They're crying hysterically. You don't want to. And honestly, I, I went into shock here. I was like, I didn't even know how to feel. I'm like, I honestly do not know how to feel about this because it's just so sad. I always had the suspicion that um, Oliver was killed, but I didn't think it was like this. So basically... It's so sad what happens here. Um, you know, that's basically what happened is that um, he wasn't killed. He just, he, he was he was killed, basically. So it's so sad to see what happened there. And um, basically, Elaine tells them, please do not tell Sylvie. But I'm just like, seriously, after all that, you don't want him to tell him, um, basically. Just so she can remember, and I understand why. I mean, it's so she can remember him as not a monster. Because if if she found out, I mean, think of how caring she was towards the Hughes family. She cared for them more than everything. She gave them a home. She told them they could stay there as long as they want. I mean, she really was nice to them. So if she found out about this, she would be pissed at Elaine. And it really would make a lot of sense. So, basically... Um, Tony finds compassion with himself to resist telling Sylvie the truth, and the crime is now solved. Only one thing is still missing. That's the body. So police finally catch up to Jorge at his forest cabin. He shoots a rifle, but before they can get him, he shoots a rifle right into his mouth, and that's that. So they have they don't know where he is and everything. And it kind of was frustrating here. I'm like, why aren't we finding out where he is? Because I want to know where Oliver is. I want to know what happened to him. But we're not getting any answers here, so I'm just like... Well, that was annoying. So, basically, we have no idea what happened to Oliver, and it's just, it's very frustrating. It is. So, 
Mark and Emily travel back to London, and um, Julian drops Tony off the train station. I thought this was a great scene because one of the best parts of the show was Julian's and Tony's partnership. And now it's finally ended, and Julian encourages Tony to try to start living his life because all Tony's life, what has his life been? Trying to find his son, trying to find his son. That's been his whole life, but he's so hung up on the missing body. You know, he says, I just keep thinking the one only person that saw the body was Jorge's. Indeed, you know, and that's true because we never saw the body. We don't see that Oliver was killed. I'm just, it doesn't really make sense. They didn't say who killed him. All we know is that Jorge saw a dead body and they assume he's dead. But I'm just like, there's something else going on here that doesn't seem right to me. It doesn't just seem like Oliver was killed. That doesn't seem like what was going on here. Because they didn't explain who killed him. They didn't explain why he was killed. They didn't explain any of that. So, he's also hung up on this Romanian crime ring that he found out um, Julian investigated back in 2006. But Julian insists that the tip was nothing more than a plot to flush out the undercover agent Antoine and... Um, Tony's not convinced, though. You know, he's not convinced at all about this. He thinks there's definitely something else going on. So before saying goodbye, Julian tells Tony the truth, the tough truth he needs to hear. And uh, we discovered what really happened, and it was awful. Um, you know, he says, "You." And I love what he says to him. He says, we discovered what happened. It's awful. Now it's done. You need to move on. And uh, he says at least he wasn't tortured, taken captive for years, or abused by Ian. And he points out that the painful truth that what happened to your boy is perhaps the best you could have hoped for. And, um, it, it's, it's weird, though, because we're 30 minutes in. We're, like, 30-something minutes in, and it kind of feels anticlimactic. I'm like, this can't be true. This cannot be what's actually going on. There has to be something else going on here. It just seems too simple. It seems too simple, and the missing is not like that. So, I knew there's something else going on. I want to know what's going on here, and I'm just like, there's no way that's what's going on. There has to be something else going on here. And I knew that clearly there was something that um, they were all hiding. So I was very interested in seeing what was going on. So while all of this is going on, we also see the tragedy of Vincent, who honestly, I gotta say, did not have too much to do in this show. Um, basically what ended up happening is that early in the episode, he attends a church support group for people like him, but wonders if science can't save him, how could God? He ultimately decides that if God's the one who can cure him, then he is also the one who made him sick in the first place. He comes to a decision, if he can't cure himself, he'll kill himself, and he hangs himself in his dining room. Now, how do I feel about that? I honestly don't really care, because, I mean, Vincent, yeah, he was a very good character, but ever, ever since episode 5, he hasn't had too much to do, and I liked his character, I definitely really enjoyed his character, but it really does make sense. I mean, he's been trying to, to fix himself, and nothing's been working, so him killing himself, it does feel kind of tacked on, it does, but I still thought it was a good way to end his character. Um... So yeah, that was really good. So then we get probably one of my favorite scenes yet, so I love this scene. Um, Emily is now getting married to Mark. Emily decided to marry Mark, which I was completely surprised about because her and Tony had so much chemistry in the last episode, and it seemed like she was kind of losing chemistry from Mark, but um, it doesn't seem like that now. So Tony's attending this backyard reception. Really, this episode made me realize that Tony cannot get married to Emily again because he's so hung up on Oliver, and he's never going to stop being up, uh, hung up on him. So... Basically, the cloud of misery that's followed her, you know, her being so upset and everything, she's actually finally happy. Now that she knows what happened, she's happy. And she gives a great toast, thanking her friends and loved ones for helping her through the years. We also see a few other things. We see Malik Suri, you know, and his family. Um, we see Rini and her boyfriend. We see a bunch of things that I really liked seeing. It was a very good, this was very satisfying in my opinion, definitely. But keep in mind, we're still only 37 minutes in. So, she envisions Oliver standing in the crowd. She and Tony share a quiet moment inside the house. Emily tells Tony something she's ashamed to reveal to anyone else. Um, and I thought this was interesting that she said that, but it really does make sense. She says, when they found out that Oliver died, she actually felt relieved to know what happened. And it really does make sense, if you think about it. And the reason it makes sense is because of the fact that she was so upset because she was holding it back. Think about it. The whole season, she's been holding it back. And now that she knows that Oliver is dead and she has that closure... She's fine now, and I liked hearing that because it really does show the difference between Tony and Emily. Tony will, you know, show his emotions so well while Emily tries to hold it back as best as she can. And I like seeing that in this episode. Really, the, the big difference between them is that, definitely. So, 
she knows Tony's the only other person in the world who understands that feeling, but you don't know, because then we go to we go to sometime in the future, maybe a year, two years later, and this is the end of the episode, basically. And this was kind of weird to me. So Tony's sifting through old case files, and he hasn't, and we see that a few years later, he still hasn't given up the case. He's still not, he still thinks something else is going on. And he seems like he's found something. It, seem, it seems like we're back to the first episode. And Julian advised him over the phone, if you can't live with your dad, we'll destroy you. But he doesn't listen, he's never listened to Julian's advice, so he wasn't going to now. And then we go to a few years later, and Tony has a huge beard. And it took me a while to realize, oh, that's actually Tony. For a while, I'm like, who is that? But then I'm like, oh, that's Tony. And this has to do with the opening scene. He goes to the snow-covered park in Russia. That's why he was harassing those kids, because he was trying to find Oliver. He knocks on a door in an apartment complex, and a young teenage boy opens the door. And um, it looks like Oliver, and he says it's you, my boy. He tries to communicate that he's his father in broken Russian. He shows him the stick figure drawing. The boy doesn't seem to understand, and basically, the thing that ha basically what ends up happening after that is that you know um, it seems that maybe he is Oliver. Because I was thinking, is it Oliver? Because I mean, the boy didn't seem to even recognize Tony but it does make sense because Oliver was kidnapped when he was five and a lot of times when you're that age you don't remember things that happen um that far you know you don't remember like me I don't remember back to when I'm like five or something like that I remember as far as like seven or six but not when I'm five so it does make sense why Oliver wouldn't recognize Tony Maybe he got rid of him in a way that benefited him personally. Um, something clearly happened. You know, definitely, if the, if Oliver really is there, then maybe that Russian guy uh, didn't kidnap him or anything. Um, it, it's just weird what happened there. And maybe it, it seems like Elaine lied, definitely. I mean, the whole story was told by Elaine, who... It does make sense. I mean, he was probably heavily medicated, probably a little bit high, probably not with it, definitely a little bit out of it. Half of his story was related to him by Jorge's, and after his brother stepped in, he blew his own head off, so they couldn't confirm anything, so you don't know really what happened here, and I don't think we're ever going to know what happened. And um, before we can get any questions, a moment later... Um, Basically, a cop swoop in on Tony, and it seems like a huge nightmare. It seems like there's something not right here. And apparently, this isn't the first door Tony has knocked on. He's been harassing kids all over town. That's who he was. That was the menacing man in the opening scene. He's gone insane, or even become something of a child predator himself, obsessing over clues that aren't there, seeing his son and strangers, and able to let go of his doubts, accept the truth, and move on. And he's then in the back of a cop car, and that's the end of the missing for this season. And, wow, I I don't know how to feel about that. I really don't. Um, I'm like, seriously? I'm kind of upset that they're doing a total new case next season because I don't want it to end like that. I don't want it to end like that. It just feels very anticlimactic to me. It doesn't feel like, I mean, as a finale, it was amazing. It was a great finale. I loved it. I was totally into it the entire time. There was nothing wrong with it. But if you were to say, you know, if this show were to get another season, yeah, I would I would have no problem with it. But think of it as basically, you know, um, all these people we've been introduced to, Vincent, uh, Ian, the Romanian crime ring, Remy and her brother, Malik, nothing. They have nothing to do with anything now. Nothing. And uh, it's extremely annoying now. I feel very betrayed. I feel very upset. It does seem like an easy way out. It definitely seems like they... It kind of seems like they didn't really know what to do. I kind of feel like they only thought this was going to be a one-and-done thing. So they did the best they could. But do another case, and they've been renewed for a season two. I kind of feel like they just put it out like they didn't know what else to do. And it, it's really unfortunate that this happened. I'm kind of... I'm very pissed off, actually. This, honestly, is probably the most disappointing finale I've seen so far. Really, out of every show I review, this is one of the most disappointing finales. And it's it's half-finished, and I'm not happy about that. Yes, it's an open ending. And yes, basically what we saw is that Tony's gone insane and everything. But it just doesn't seem complete, and I'm not happy about that. Just ending it with him getting arrested, I understand. If they would have ended it with him going crazy... 
that would have been fine. But ending it with him arrested is just, it feels like, it kind of feels annoying. However, I actually really love it as well. I think it's a great twist, and I also really enjoy it. It, it, it doesn't make sense, okay? You guys are probably like, what the hell do you mean, Kevin? That doesn't make any sense. Well, let me explain. I don't know what I mean right now. I have no idea what I'm saying, because it's, it's such a confusing ending. I don't know how to explain it. I really don't. I don't like it. Uh, at the same time, I love it. Um... You know, I think that it's a really, really satisfying finale, but at the same time, I'm not satisfied. I want more to it. And honestly, that could be a good thing. Maybe it's because I was really into the story, but let's talk about the season overall. I don't even know how to feel about it now. I don't know. Um, a lot of times, the show dragged on a lot, a lot of times. And now it really makes sense why we focus so much on Tony attacking all those people and those scenes with the children, things like that. Now it makes sense because he's gone crazy and he's basically turned into what he never wanted to be and that is a child predator. Because um, now like he thinks every single child is his son. And he can't get over the fact that his son is dead. And... The thing with Oliver being dead, I'm just not happy that we didn't get a definitive answer of, you know, how he died or who killed him. I would have wanted an actual answer, and we didn't get one. So it's kind of annoying to me. And again, if they would have done a season two with this case and just focused on Tony and everything, Tony in jail, I would be fine with that. But the fact they're opening a new case... I don't want to see it. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to see a season two of The Missing if it's a new case, okay? If they want to do another season and continue the same story, I'm down. But if they want to do this new case, I'm not into it because I don't feel satisfied. I don't feel completed. I feel like I was kind of, I feel like they, they, I was kind of cheated. I honestly do. I feel like I've spent eight episodes to get to nothing. Really. It seems like these eight episodes led us to nothing, but at the same time, I love it, and I don't know how to describe it. It's really, really weird. I think it's an amazing twist. I think the story was very good. I think the way they handled that ending was very, very good and very intense. It just didn't seem satisfying enough to me. It seemed like a dissat- you know, and- it might be because it's the first season, but I'm just kind of upset that it's, it's, I don't see this show going for a procedural show. If they want to make this a show that has a different case every season, I don't think it's going to work. I really don't. They need to fix this because I'm not happy about this at all. I really hope they continue this story because I'm not happy if they decide not to continue this story. If they don't want to continue the story, I'm not going to be a happy viewer and it's going to leave me very upset. So I really hope they do decide to continue this story because I definitely really enjoy that and if they want to do that, I'd be very happy with that. But we'll have to see what happens. But let's talk about what I thought of the show overall. As I said, I, I don't know how to feel about it, but there were a lot of things I definitely really liked about the show. I liked the mystery aspect of it, but now it's all over and... It just doesn't feel right to me. I, I don't know what it is. I just don't... It doesn't seem right. And you guys will notice, I gave this episode a 5 out of 5 on TV Show Tracker. When I when I put on Twitter, you know, I always rate the episodes. I gave it a 5 out of 5. I gave it a 5 out of 5 as a finale. I didn't give it a 5 out of 5 as a series finale. I gave it a 5 out of 5 as a season finale. As a season finale, it was amazing. As a series finale, it wasn't satisfying at all. Um, it really wasn't, and I really wish they continue this case, and I'm kind of upset they're not. And it's not so much that I'm upset at what happened in the episode. I'm upset that that's it. That's what I'm upset about. I am not ups I am not going to judge the episode, because the episode as a whole was amazing, and I loved it. But if I really think about it, you know, if I really think about season two, I'm upset that they decided to do a different case. I'm not happy with this. This is not True Detective. This is not American Horror Story. You cannot do this with The Missing. It does not work. I'm sorry. It does not work. You need to continue this story. Do what The Affair does. The Affair was a show that I thought was going to be, um, you know, a different uh, affair every season, but it doesn't seem like that now. So I really wish they did that, but they're not doing that, and it's really annoying to me. And I really wish I would have liked it more, but I didn't. And again, as a finale, loved it. As a series finale, didn't like it. Now, it, it, I know you guys are just saying, stop repeating yourself. Stop saying the same things over and over again. Guys, it's just really frustrating to me, and I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to describe how I feel about this. I don't know how to describe what's going on. I don't, I don't know how to describe anything, really, because I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of upset that they just ended it like that. I feel like they didn't know what else to do with Tony's character, so they put him in jail and they thought that'd be a good ending. It's not satisfying. This show is not about Tony... Okay, the show was about Tony's journey and how he needs to get over this and everything. I understand.
understand that. But I want to see another season. I at least want to get some sort of conclusion, and I just didn't feel like we got enough. We only really got a conclusion to, to Emily's character. That's who we got a conclusion to. Emily's character, we got a perfect conclusion to. Julian's character, we didn't get much of a conclusion to. What's Julian doing? Is he moving on with his life? Like, what's he doing now? Um, is he going back to his wife? Like, we didn't see what's going on there. It just seems like all these characters we had now feel pointless, and I really wish we had a season two, but we don't. And that's basically for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed this finale as a season finale was very good, but it was kind of disappointing. It was definitely probably the most disappointing finale I've seen in a very long time. Let me know what you guys saw this finale. I think, honestly, this is going to be a very controversial topic. I really do. I feel like this is going to be a very controversial finale. A lot of people are going to say this is very unsatisfying. Um... I know a lot of people were upset when Fargo ended, and I didn't have a problem with that, but this I kind of have a problem with because it just doesn't seem satisfying enough to me. I'm not as satisfied as I want to be. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for a movie review. Guys, tomorrow all the videos I do are for Golden Globes. I will be reviewing a few movies I need to review before the Golden Globes, and then, my, then I will do my Golden Globes nominations. I will do my Golden Globes trailer video, and then I will do my Golden Globe live stream. So stay, stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you guys saw the missing overall, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye.